<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 80 of the Random Thought Show. I'm back, I'm feeling better, I've got Darren by my side and we're ready to go. Yes. So, um, we talked about hormones and neurotransmitters a couple of weeks ago and then we kind of uh, we took a sidestep. Uh, we just left it sit there and hang there yeah, for a little bit and now, we're going, now we're back for part two. We built the suspense. Um, let's talk about the ones we didn't get around to. Yeah, and the thing that reminded me that we hadn't done this was I watched the Crows-Geelong game in the mm. AFL prelim on last week. So Crows Richmond tomorrow in the AFL grand final. Oh, it was a great it was a great game. And I watched the I knew from the start that Adelaide had a ripping chance, especially in the first quarter, they were gonna come out hard from their stance, their power stance during that anthem. Yeah. And they're doing this thing of this final series. I hope they do it tomorrow as well. Oh, they're definitely they're, doing it. Where they're standing full alpha, like a meter apart. Feet wide, like Superman stance. Feet wide, big chest, arms out by the side, fists clenched, staring, unblinking at their opponent. Yeah. And it is intimidating. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, and there's some real science behind it. Well, and yeah, and there's a lot of there's there's been a fair bit of media about it. And I was reading an article today. It was saying you know they're not going to reveal the secret. And um, you know what? We can reveal the secret here and now. We know what the secret is. <laughs> um, they've both watched the same TED talk we've watched. Yep. Um, which is the Amy Cuddy um, body language and its influence on hormones. Um, the, the, power, the power of posture. Or... We'll link to it. So yeah, I forgot what it's called exactly, but Amy Cuddy's a presenter. It's one of the most watched TED Talks in the world. That's awesome. 30 million It's a, years it's a beautiful story. Like her story is really inspiring. It's, it's, it's just great on so many levels. It's got its, got its layers. Um, but the basic premise is that the way we stand influences our physiology in terms of our hormones. So if you stand in a power stance, you'll actually alter your testosterone to cortisol ratio. Uh, yeah. And that ratio is a big part of what makes you perform and feel Powerful. If you have more testosterone in relation to the cortisol, uh, that's that's a great thing. And that then in turn influences your confidence, your risk taking ability, your your just general alpha and, level status. And as it's a your human. aggression. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and so you you can alter it. And the the thing Amy talks about is you could do what are called Wonder Woman's or Superman's, where you hands on your hips, puff the chest up, and just and really feel like you're mm -hmm. commanding space, and your body actually responds to that. Um, and because the study she talks about in the, mm, in the uh, TED talk, which I rock, recommend everybody yeah. should watch. If you're, a, if you're a human and you're interested in stuff. <laughs> if you're a human who lives with other humans. And you're interested in... <laughs> Not even if you're interested. If you're a human who lives around and spends time in society, you should watch this to understand because it's profound how influential it can be. You know, so, even if you're a human and you're a hermit. Like, you still want to feel good in yourself. Yeah, it's true. In, in fact, yeah. fair enough. So all humans. All hermits as well. Um, <laughs> so she has two groups. One group is the power stance, the supermans and the superwomans. And then the other group is the low power positions. They kind of curl up into the balls. diminished. They fold their by, arms. By, they cross their legs. By the way, the typical posture that many women will tend to adopt are, are, are diminishing, not taking up too much space, legs crossed. Um, yeah. except, except for many of our – we had one of our new athletes, uh, one of our development squad players for the Boomers start a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and she's going to be great long term. But she came in, she sat down, she's kind of sat down, I stride the chair, like, let's do this. Yeah, took up let's half rock the, this strength and conditioning. Took up half the table, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're, you're going to be good. Good testosterone levels. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so with that in mind, and I'll, I, I kind of want Adelaide to win tomorrow because I kind of called it in the Geelong oh. game. I, was ex I explained to I was watching with some friends and I explained the situation and said they're going to come out and they did and they came out and kicked the first two or three goals and she went bang, bang, bang and then from there the game was over. Well, they just had that, that psychological I think, edge. I think you're a heartless jerk. <laughs> <laughs> My dad goes no, to Adelaide. I don't care. Like, poor old Richmond. Those, mm. Like, those Richmond people, they have, they, they are the most, like, give me your downtrodden, give me your, yeah. your, your forgotten masses. Those people have put up with so much my entire life that I can remember. Yeah, for those not familiar with AFL, Richmond's kind of like the... The, the Richmond of... <laughs> <laughs> they're the touchstone for poor, long-suffering losers. Yeah, it was the Western Bulldogs until last year because they'd, they'd gone, what, 60 years? Yeah, but they'd gotten to some, I think... They'd I, spent some time in the prelims. Yeah, Richmond has a perennial thing of being the last team to... Like the ninth, the ninth was, position is the last team to miss and, finals. And I think Richmond's done historically. They've done a better job of getting your hope, of getting their fans' hopes up. And everyone's like, this is the year! <laughs> And then no, like, they're really yeah. pumping and then dashing, pumping and then dashing. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's yeah. A, so what I want is I want Adelaide to come out and destroy the first quarter. Um, to, I love the testosterone. To vindicate <laughs> our hypothesis and our thoughts. To back up the uh, And then what I want is a fairy tale story of coming from behind where Richard will win with five point. That's actually what I want. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, the influence of your posture on your physiology is... Fascinating. 
And so from there, I suppose we should lead into testosterone. Yeah, because we're going to talk the about the alpha hormone. Why, why it's important. Yeah. Um, so linked with aggression, it's, linked and with muscle building. It's an it's anabolic n- thing. It's not just a male hormone either. Men yeah. have a lot more than females, but it is still a big factor yeah. in females. Also bone health and like mu- it builds muscle, but it also builds and protects mm. your bone mass. Yeah. So osteoporosis is a big thing when it comes to deficient testosterone yeah. in, in both older men and women. Yeah. Um, so that's an interesting thing there as well. Yeah. Uh, aggression. So high testosterone leads to more aggressive, more risk-taking type behavior, more likely to bet and gamble and, and mm. do crazy things. Yep. As you see in teenage boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and more likely to not necessarily think things through. Mm. Yeah. Um, but uh, also a really useful getting stuff done hormone. Once it's, I think, it, I think in some ways testosterone gets a bad rep from aggressive blokes who've had a few too many drinks yeah or from meat young, athletes as well uh, yeah and and young blokes who don't know how to control themselves which comes back to our risk taking um mm. the frontal the front, prefrontal cortex yeah which yeah. Will, I'll, I'll link to that random thoughts as well which is a good one for young men to be across yeah yeah um but it's a great moment if you if you can elevate your testosterone a little bit in relation to your, your cortisol because it's always in in a relationship with cortisol yeah it's it's that, it doesn't live in isolation the anabolic testosterone effect countered with the mm. catabolic cortisol effect and the yeah. balance between the two tells you your freshness, your readiness to train, your readiness to go mm. and be an athlete or be yeah, so it's, whatever. It's a great hormone. Um, and it does diminish with age as well. Yep. Uh, one thing you can do to, to maintain it is maintain lifting because lifting does... Uh, lifting and, and sprinting and high-intensity type does, training. Yep. does stimulate to, to hang around. Um, and also making sure your diet's got a good amount of fat in it. Some misguided people... Um, less less prevalent now, but it used to be people would try, we're trying to gain muscle mass but stay ripped, would keep really low fat diets. Like, mm-hmm. no, you're killing it because your testosterone is made from testosterone um, is a cortisol, uh, cortisol, yeah. <laughs> cholesterol derived hormone. Yeah. It's literally made, the building block is cholesterol. So, and cholesterol is has a strong affinity with vitamin D. So, yes. sunlight is therefore mm-hmm. important as well. Um, but then your fats, and that mm-hmm. includes your saturated fats as well. Yeah. So, the whole thing of having zero saturated fat. I'm not saying go out and, and find all the deep fried food tomorrow. So that's, no. that's a terrible idea. But you want some saturated fat from whether it be meats, eggs, yeah. nuts, stuff like that as and well. Can we, on, on the deep fried thing, to be clear, the, the harmful part of all the um, deep fried stuff is actually all the vegetable fats. Yeah, the, the um, we were, oxygenated and high. We were never meant, like, like all, the, all the oil from canola. Like think of how little oil there is. In a canola flour. In a, in, the, in a little canola seed or whatever. Yeah. Like we were just never meant to have that much. Is it len- lenolic, lenolic acid? There's an acid that you get out of canola. It's actually the really, omega six one, which really is the inflammatory one. The inflammatory yeah. one. Yeah, we're just never meant to have that. So um, the bad thing about the deep frying is not so much the deep frying, it's the fact that it's the vegetable oils. And then in some cases the trans fats as well, yeah, which are the the devil, the absolute devil, the cell disrupting devil. And also, while well, well, we're on the topic of deep fry, there's also the um, combination of uh, high levels of that omega six inflammatory fat. Co- um, combined with simple starches, so whether it be sugar or yep. like wheat and so and, and it's a high GI things, so you get this massive influx of glucose along with the inflammatory fats. Yeah, and it's a deadly combination. It's a potent combo, isn't it? Yeah, um, but yeah, testosterone. So you want it, but you don't want to um, be having to um, inject it because that is evil, bad, and dangerous and uh, illegal. <laughs> you know, there's, there's so many layers that. But uh, things and you can do like altering your posture, really training a bit, training intensely, and keeping your fat up. Uh, yeah. Really beneficial. Um, there's lots of stuff with like just screaming. Might be a little hard yeah. to do that in your workplace or in your school before a test or before an interview. Um, but like screaming, punching things, like acts of aggression that don't hurt anyone um, can raise your testosterone and sort of get that all fired up. But I would yeah. just start with the power poses. I would just... <laughs> definitely start with the yeah. power poses. <laughs> definitely. Just throwing options out. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else on testosterone? Or you no, I think on? that's that's yeah. a good little uh, summary of it. Cool. Um, Growth hormone. Growth hormone. Mm. So growth hormone is... Not just an illegal drug? No, it's a magical, magical hormone that um, helps you be... And we talked about it last time. We touched in, on it uh, in episode 78 in the other... Well, no, we talked about it in um, a bit of detail in the saunas episode. Oh, we last week you and James. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, great hormone. Uh, helps you lose body fat, gain muscle, have nice skin, hair, nails... Uh, feel Cog- good cognitive function there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. yeah it's it's a it's a great hormone um it does tragically drop off after 25 um oh, that's where we started <laughs> yeah yeah, it, yeah it does start to drop off um but again it, it, because you don't need as much because when you're young 
your body's growing like a growth hormone. So uh, trade secret, one way to tell if a bodybuilder is likely on growth hormone is they've got that massive belly pushing out through their abs. So they've got like 3% body fat and you can see like the striations that, of their abs. And that's because they've been taking insane amounts of growth hormone and everything grows. So your organs, yeah. Jaw, organs. Even your brain. Elbows. Really? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Everything grows. Yeah. And so what they, they yeah, so so growth hormone isn't mm-hmm. just a muscle and a bone growing, but when you're a kid, so the reason it drops off when you're 25 is when you're a kid, it's the reason you're growing taller. And in fact, uh, there's uh, there's a good example. I won't I won't name the player, but they um, had a um, a disorder where their uh, a non cancerous tumor was pressing on their pituitary gland, uh, and it made them grow really really tall. Uh, and they are perfectly healthy now, and it's all turned out pretty good. Um, but, but that's actually quite common in seven footers. Yeah, it's it's, it's more common than you'd think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really interesting. Um, so, in terms of, of managing your growth hormone, um, sleep. Yeah, sleep is the massive. Sleep. It's yeah. double the amount is secreted mm. overnight, or you get the majority of your growth hormone comes in overnight. So, if you're not sleeping and recovering and literally regenerating, yeah. you're not getting that growth hormone dose. And and everyone anecdotally, everyone knows that kids grow more in summer. Like everyone comes back from the summer holidays and they're all massive. Uh, and and people say, oh, it's the vitamin D and I'm sure the vitamin D helps. The, the testosterone, which is also linked to growth hormone yeah. for sure. But I'm also suspicious that just they're actually getting uh, a six-week block of, because, you know, like teenagers, they'll be, oh, like they'll come in here, oh, I got up at one o'clock today. I'm so tired. And they're all like, dr- like <laughs> they're all druggy and dopey because they've been sleeping so much. <laughs> But I think there's a, there's a lot of positive yeah. there. Um, growth hormone in terms of, again, if you're training intensely, there'll be a cascading effect. I think it's important yeah. to underscore that. So uh, it's not just the effect of the training in the moment. Like if you're just doing intervals. It's yeah, not you, just... get that, you get that. And same with testosterone. You get that yeah. small transient lift post-workout. So post-sprints, post-lifting, that, that whatever elevation. it Yeah. But it's more about the chronic effect mm. on your body and sort of maintaining a good baseline. Yeah. So when you go to night, go to bed that night, you still get yeah. the release and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's funny you said chronic then, and um, it's almost like we need a different word because when because in in wider society, when you say chronic, you know you think of chronic fatigue, chronic pain, chronic pain, a chronic issue. You think chronic is a bad thing, and it's just chronos time, which means long. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, versus acute, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's funny. So um, long term, I suppose, is a better term for the, yeah. That long, uh, well, I mean, I think it's it's fine, but it's just interesting to just pop into my head. Um, so growth hormone, yeah, uh, magic hormone, and if you train hard, you'll get a, a bit of a dose of it, which is really good. And if you have a sauna, yeah, heat, which heat you shock. bought, I checked out Jacob's sauna today. Yeah, I haven't told anyone yet. But have you? Oh, is that, is that okay? <laughs> no, you've just told mum, so <laughs> I'll expect a call sometime after this video goes up from mum. <laughs> yep, I, uh, I bought a sauna. It's awesome. <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's isn't, so cool. Isn't wired up yet, so I haven't been able to mm. test it. Um, mm. But like, yeah, not as expensive as you think. Yeah, yeah we'll, we're going to road test it and... Um, Report back at some point because we had a few questions about about all yeah. So um, and we've had some athletes sort of curious about it. And I'll let you know whether these are actually work, or whether it's just bogus and a waste of a bunch of money. So how do we test it? If if in a month's time, if you're not like running around without your shirt on, yeah. And I, I got I got my bloods done this morning, so I'm going to see um what the yeah, effects cool. are on my uh, red blood cells, my iron levels, and all that sort of stuff as well. To see so cool. do a That's bit so of an cool. AB test with um. I don't think I've ever been as jealous of a person. Yeah, I'm not materialistic, but this is I'm pretty tired oh, about this. Okay. <laughs> it's great. Mm. Cool. Very jealous. Um, Which is actually jealousy and envy leads into our next hormone, oxytocin. <laughs> that's a, that's a yes. reach. I feel like that's a reach. <laughs> no, I'm taking it. Um, oxytocin. I think you should kick us off, Darren. Okay, so oxytocin. Contrary to the disingenuous segue that Jacob just got, <laughs> um, oxytocin is, is, well, it's a complicated, um, is it, it's a neurotransmitter or a hormone? Hormone. It's a, hormone. It's a protein-derived hormone. Okay. Okay. Um, its most common association is uh, around the bond between a a mother and a newborn baby, uh, and so it's it's the the mother is flooded with oxytocin, um, which is part of an evolutionary thing to keep them from you know keep them loving their kids so that their kids survive. So that a lot of uh, most other mammals have a similar yeah built in system where the oxytocin comes in when they have the child and and and. Dads get it as well. Yep. Um, I can speak from experience. It's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty powerful one. It's the only time um, after you have a new baby, it's the only time male oxytocin levels get even remotely close to females. Yeah, 
because females kick. We might we might have the testosterone advantage, but women have the oxytocin advantage. Yeah, so we've got the mild. punching stuff being dumb advantage, hunting and, advantage, <laughs> and women have got the being nice to people, caring and nurturing advantage, and reading social situations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. <laughs> It seems like mostly we just get ourselves into trouble with the stupid testosterone and then the women patiently because of roll their eyes. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, and so there's the there's the age old joke that, you know, the husband and wife are at a party and the wife's so like suddenly like sort of giving the eye about a situation and the husband's like doesn't got no idea about it. It's because of a lack of oxytocin. Yeah. And there's actually a, a chemical reason why men often have no idea in social situations. It's no, it's not that we're just the dumb races, we just don't have the oxytocin, we don't have the chemicals it's to do the job. Yeah. Um, and so oxytocin, uh, it, if you do a nice thing for someone, you get a little shot of it. Um, the person, the recipient of the nice gesture gets a little shot of it. And the really cool thing is, <laughs> this is amazing, the person, if there's a third person observing, like, so if you're a good Samaritan and you help someone out, you feel good and there's an oxytocin surge, you also get a bit of a serotonin because you feel pretty nice about that yeah. as well. So it's like a double whammy of good feelings. Mm. Uh, the person being helped clearly feels better because someone cares about them. Yeah. And they're nice. now no longer dying. And or a completely passive observer, a third party, also gets a little shot and goes, oh, that was isn't, nice. aren't people great? <laughs> it's you phenomenal. Know? Yeah. And that's because humans have evolved to be such good social creatures. Yeah. If we hadn't evolved to be workers' teams and hunt in packs, we'd have been like picked off one by one. Picked off and would be yeah, terrible. It's very easy to forget in our current situation where we are the dominant and destructive species on in the world to forget that we were actually pretty fragile. Like like if it's me v a tiger coming out of the ice age, yeah, you know, like like, like <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, we're weak at we're these weak, fragile little creatures comparatively in in in, mm. in the jungle. Um, and so we needed to have teamwork and we needed to have fire. And communication. And, yeah, all those things. Um, and so that, that tribal thing is really important. It has a, I suppose it has a bad side as well. The it's a double-edged sword. It is a way of defining uh, us versus them. So oxytocin so, is a very much a, a group hormone as well. Mm. Um, what's interesting when I was reading up on this is that people, um, when given nasally, so they can orally uh, nasally deliver and give you a shot of oxytocin, and then, right. and then they do just the heaps of experience. So they just yeah. give, you, give, keep people, give people oxytocin and see how they respond. People are more likely to lie to defend their group or for the benefit of their group if they've been given when a they're on high levels of oxytocin. Because you, your level of care about your tribe elevates. Whether it's your sports team, your church, your club. That's cool. Whatever it might be, anything you're a member of. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so I went to, I may have mentioned this before on the podcast, so apologies if I have, but it's, it's worth mentioning twice, I reckon. Um, I went to the David Park, the Deakin University David Park and Oration, which is an annual um, speech uh, named after David Park, a very famous um, uh, AFL coach. AFL coach. Trip and North Melbourne and Carlton, if I remember. Yep. And, yep. and Deakin lecturer as well. Um, and Rick Charlesworth, one of our most successful coaches ever, who's a Who's a medical doctor was a politician and also the hockey ruse. Yeah, um, really both good. men's and women's. Really good thinker. Amazing thinker. Um, and he gave this tremendous presentation, and he said this uh, sentence that will stick with me forever. And it was um, the single biggest sense, the single biggest competitive advantage any sports can, team can have is its level of connectedness. So the biggest advantage you can have as a team is your level of connectedness. That. How closely. how closely you are. And that's those teams, are the, and I've been around those teams, they're full of oxytocin. Mm -hmm. People are, people would run through brick walls for each other. They would, you know, go into battle for each other. There's a, that, that tightness. And there's a level of invincibility that you create. When, it, when you come up again, I don't, you know, we're talking about the, the posture at the start. Yeah. I think there's almost, I think teams pick up on that, that this, that, that we could knock this team down 10 times and they'll get up 10 times. So like, what's the point? Like it's, it's exhausting. It's you just can't, there's that sense. And, and um, I've been in team, involved in teams like that where you're down by 20 points and no one has a sense that you're going to lose that game. They're all calm, collected, right? They've like, got cool. a job ahead of us. It's, yeah. You know, it's really interesting. So it's a, it's a pretty cool moment. So it's not just about being nice to babies um, <laughs> and it's not just about helping the little ladies off the street. Yeah. There's also a sports... Yeah, um, there's a performance component. It is a performance hormone as well. In a sense. Um, yeah, because any any social situation. Mm. So whether it's whether you're an individual athlete and working with your coaches and your your management team or whatever mm. it might be, or in, especially in team sport situations mm. when you have to, you know, someone's got to pass someone the ball, kick someone the ball, 
you need to trust. And so it's very, very connected with um, trust as well. So you need and, to trust someone, you need to be able to... And I think in work situations too, like I reckon we, um, it's it's sometimes stressful what we've been trying to do here with a startup business. Mm-hmm. And I think what's offset that nicely has been, uh, like the cortisol levels have been high at times. When, when, we're, <sighs> when we're on the knife's edge and we're worried we're going to run out of money and it's all going to fall over and it was, you know, I, I think the level of care and uh, sort of group connectedness around our mission was was pretty vital in keeping that. Yeah, um, keeping everyone on point and, and thinking about the long, not just the how crappy it was at certain points when things were tight. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a good all-round one. Yeah. It's a good hormone. Mm. All right. Uh, as far as increasing it. Be nice to people. Be nice to people. Watch other people be nice to each other. Um, mm. Mostly be nice to people. If I'm put, trying to put a message out into the world. Yeah. If, you know, like it sounds really um, lame, but, you know, fill buckets, be nice. Yeah. I mean, no way religious, but do unto others as you will do unto yourself. Yeah. Is a pretty... That's a good one. Good way to live your life. Mm. Uh, I, but I feel like we've finished too, uh, too hokey. <laughs> I don't know where to go. Um, concrete action steps. Yeah. So, uh, train hard for the growth hormone. And the testosterone. Uh, get plenty of sleep, so you call uh, Actually, off. on growth hormone, yeah. one last thing we, we, that I yeah. think is going to receive a lot more uh, attention in the next couple of years is IGF-1. Mm. Uh, IGF-1 is the sort of the flow on the next step from growth hormone when it comes to mm. actually directly increasing muscle mass and yep. bone density, things like that. Uh, it has been, in some research, been linked to a uh, shorter lifespan, mm. but in others has been linked to light, long lifespan. So it's kind of the thing, and I suppose one thing with all these hormones is like we talked about the negative side of oxytocin and the positive side, all these hormones are in ebbs and flows. So it's not like, oh, growth hormone is only good and testosterone yeah. is only bad in this it's situation. It's such a complex interplay. It's such a, yeah. So for example, ghrelin, the hunger hormone is linked to higher body weight, but then, you know, when you sleep, you release growth hormone and ghrelin. So it's like, it's this whole mm. convoluted, weird thing. So which, which leads me to a really nice takeaway and finishing point. Good job. Yeah, um, going somewhere. And that is that you should never, ever artificially intervene within that system because it's really arrogant to think that we can intervene and have benefits without having long-term I just negatives. need 10 cc's more of this. I need to, no, Take a pill. Just, yeah. You know, like uh, intervene to the extent that you're, you're having a sauna or you're training hard, but don't or, actually... Or your nutrition. Yep. Uh, just that's, that's manipulating the system, but it's not introducing new chemicals into the system. It's, yeah. it's not a good idea. So you should just live naturally... Um, and avoid anything like that. And try and, uh, try and uh, avoid eating animals that have also been given the hormones. Yeah, mm. that's a topic. But you're doing a very good job because you're <laughs> vegetarian. Uh, 10 yeah. months now vegetarian. Yeah. Uh, but that is a topic beyond, today, yeah, and probably today. beyond our qualifications, I reckon. I think that's a topic we're never going to talk about, so don't, don't tune in for that. <laughs> don't, ex- don't expect that one to come up. Uh, but I think that brings us to the end of episode 80. Excellent. So there'll be some show notes. I'll link to the Danger Blind video, um, a few links to those hormones that we mentioned um, today. And if you're still watching this on um, YouTube, uh, do give a crack with the, some some people. I've talked to people this week about the podcasting thing. They're like, oh, but how do I do it? Uh, so you made up a great little video on how to podcast. Which I'll also link. Um, it's pretty good because you can do it while you're washing the dishes or you can uh, hang out, go, for, washing, a walk, go yeah. for a walk, whatever you like. Um, yeah, I, I think podcasts are great. Yeah. Um, still under surprisingly underrated. In, yeah. It's so clever. Yeah. Not like as is cleverish, but like the no. actual thing is really clever. The concept, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. But cool. That brings us to the end. And the we'll, actual end. we'll see you next week in my sauna. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to see you in his sauna. <laughs>